Okay. You're about to witness a professional. <laughs> In this chapter, we're covering styling and decor for your bedroom. I'll start with walls. We'll do artwork and curtains, and then move on to tabletop surfaces, and then finally just a few finishing touches throughout the room. These little things, while they may seem like you don't need them, will actually bring your room to life. And I think make it a place that you really want to be, that you enjoy being, that feels like a retreat from the world. I'm always thinking about what comes into my space and if it's something that I love or something that I have appreciation for or maybe has a special memory attached to it. So it's about being intentional and choosing things that you will enjoy, that have a purpose and are beautiful to you. In my room, I'll be starting with the walls first. So that will be curtains hanging over the windows and then a few pieces of art around the space. So as you can see, we have shades here in our space. Just outside our window is this row of trees and bushes, and it's great to see those through the windows with the shades open, but I actually want a little more privacy in our room, so I drop the shades, and then the light pours through those tree branches, and I see all of the shadows on our shades, and it's like art, living art on our windows. That's very specific to our space. It might not be the case for yours, but it is affecting the way I'm choosing to design our window treatments, and I'll certainly make decisions right. based on that. So, gotta find the top. The curtains I picked out are fairly simple. They're an off-white linen material with some accent edging on the side. I'm gonna hang them high and let them kind of pool at the bottom of the floor. That's it, got it. I like to go as, as tall as I can with my curtains and have them either just touching the floor or even pooling a little at the floor. Anything shorter than that starts to feel like, it's almost like pants that don't quite fit you. You want your curtains to fit your window and in my opinion, that means they touch the floor. In certain situations, maybe it's like in a kitchen or a mudroom, a cafe curtain that just goes to the windowsill is sufficient. But in a bedroom, I think where you want it to feel a little more sophisticated, go all the way. Actually, what's so cool about something like this is immediately the room feels more dramatic. <laughs> maybe it's the height, maybe it's just all of this fabric, but I notice a big difference from no curtains around the windows to now curtains hung around the windows. I really love it. So for your space, when you're thinking through window treatments, of course, functionality is really important. So what kind of light control do you need? What kind of privacy? But then also think for a design point of view. Do you want a more modern look, something edited and minimal? In that situation, maybe you skip curtains altogether and you just go with roller shades or blinds. But if you like the drama of fabric around your windows, you want something a little bit more romantic or traditional, this is a great way to add that to your space. And it's really just a matter of choosing what kind of fabric. I chose this fabric because I wanted something that just felt easy and simple and didn't take away from the statement headboard and the really interesting furniture and the patterned rug. I knew that I had gone big in other areas and wanted the textiles to be soft and simple. Now I'm gonna put up some art. I've got a few options, I'm gonna test them out and see how they look on our walls. Okay, here are my options. Now I am especially passionate about art. This is a part of the process that I get really excited about. What I like to do when looking for art is exhaust every option so that my art is absolutely as one of a kind as possible. And that means, in this case, I've pulled some of my dad's artwork, which is very special and I feel really lucky to have it. But I also shop antique malls and thrift stores and estate sales. I'm always on the hunt for vintage art because it's higher quality if you can find it and it's less expensive. 
I also love going to small marketplaces and supporting smaller individual artists. I just love that you can be a part of bringing someone else's dreams to life and supporting a person that is really pouring themselves into their work. But then there are also other options as well. There's great reproduction art out there, prints. So shop the marketplace, let yourself fall in love with something and don't worry about if it's the right thing or the wrong thing. There aren't too many rules when it comes to art. I like these particular pieces of art because they reflect my personal taste and my husband's taste in art. It's abstract, color focused, textural, and I like that. This is another piece that I chose just for this room. My husband's a musician. This is my dad's art. I also like that it's sort of sketchy and imperfect. It looks a little bit incomplete. I don't like art that's too fussy or too formal. So this really fits in with our decor and sensibility for art. This is a stack of personal photos of our kids. I like to place a few photos in a bedroom because again, it's a really personal space. I wanna remember these, these special moments from my children. It just brings me a bit of joy. Selecting the art you'll place in your room is one part of the process, but the next stage is determining where it should live on the walls. So when I'm scanning the room, I'm looking for wall space that's empty to determine where I need art. So it can be as simple as just looking around and going, okay, that wall feels a little bare. I think I want something over the bed. This wall over here, over the dresser, feels like it needs something. So it can really just be as simple as that. It's not to say you have to fill all of your wall space with art, but places where your eye just naturally wants to go, but is empty, is a great place to put art. The first piece of art that I'd like to test out is this one above our chest of drawers. Okay, I think I'm gonna do this centered and hung kind of low. Something to think about with art placement is where it meets your eye level. So when you walk into a room, Hang your art at a level that feels natural to see. You don't wanna to have to look up to see your art. And that usually means it's gonna hang a little bit lower. I also like to think about the relationship between art on the wall and furniture in the room so that they feel like they're part of a, the same grouping and not separate things floating in the space. All right. Yeah. In a situation like this, where it's a single piece of art over a single piece of furniture, I rarely measure. I'm usually just eyeballing placement. If you're working on a larger collection of art that requires a bit more precision, maybe a grid that needs to line up, I would definitely encourage that you measure things out. But generally speaking, I found that using your eyes to gauge where something should go is the easiest and best way to hang art. The next piece of art to place is above the bed, which is a major focal point of the room. When you walk in, this is what your eye will mostly be drawn towards. It's an important part of the room. So I wanna be really intentional about it. I picked out these two pieces because I felt like they would maintain the symmetry that we already have going here. Sometimes I like to throw that off, but in this case, I think I wanna keep it. In this situation, because we're working off of a center point, I think what I'll do is measure to find the center of this wall, and then I'm gonna eyeball placement from there. I like to get a general sense of spacing so that I know about how much space I want between these pieces of art. Something in there feels good. It's about three or four inches, maybe five. that. Oh, it's great to see all of this come together. I think that's exactly what I wanted. I've got art above the bed, I've got a piece of art over the chest of drawers, and I'm looking around the room and noticing that this corner right here is a little dark. And I think it would benefit from just placing a couple frames right there.
there we go. Just a little something in this corner, brightens it up. I'll get ready in the morning, I'll look at my beautiful children, I'll remember how sweet they are sometimes, and I think it's perfect. <laughs> so now we're almost there. These are the final things to put in your room. I'm going to find objects that are personal to me and that I know will help me keep clutter managed, uh, collect things that I don't want scattered about. So just the smallest details to finish out this room. There we go. I always love something living in a space. I think so much of what disrupts the design of a space is the clutter that inevitably finds its way onto every surface. So I'm always looking for objects that can collect that stuff. And that could be a box or a tray or a small dish, but just something to gather things together so that things feel a little more tidy, a little more peaceful. So that's it. We've talked about a lot of things in this chapter, and I would encourage you to remember that there are very few rules when it comes to this part of the design process. This is about adding a personal layer to your room. Hopefully in the end, you have a space that is easy to live in, it's comfortable, it feels connected to that original design direction you established at the very beginning, and it's a place you truly enjoy being.